Radio Tiny House. I'm Barry Smith. And I'm Beth. Today is Tuesday, December 15th. Tomorrow is our um, anniversary. anniversary. I can't say how many or I'll get, no. I'll get stabbed under the microphone. <laughs> we don't talk about that. It's been more than, a, than one year. It's been more than one year. It's been way more than one year. We have children and grandchildren. That's, That's right. all we'll say. <laughs> December 15th, we're close to uh, Christmas. We're right in the middle of Hanukkah. So happy Hanukkah, happy Christmas, and uh, happy holidays if you don't celebrate either one. <laughs> we decorated our house for Christmas. Yeah. We sorta. decorated our yard for Christmas. Yes, we put it on Instagram. I'll probably put that up again. That's... We have a big uh, hay bale that we use, hay bale ring that we use for the garden entrance. Um, and our daughter swings on yoga, that uses it for yoga yes. swing. And Which so is, I decided I was going to cover it in lights, so it's kind of fun. Um, our, one of our weekly features is Reasons to Go Tiny. Um, and I wanted to talk today about land use. Okay. So, it, you know, there, there, of course, everybody that goes tiny or, or, or shed, sheddy, um, has different reasons for doing it, whether it's financial reasons or they're trying to get away from the city or they're, they just want to live a, a, a life that's more simple or in some cases under the radar even um we can't do that much anymore because of drones and things like that's that. very true and and under the radar nosy I don't think county it inspectors <laughs> nosy county inspectors <laughs> internet yeah it's hard to it's almost impossible to be under the radar yes anymore. it is and and yeah especially nosy neighbors and tiny nosy homes neighbors. i mean tiny homes we're going to talk about this a little bit later but tiny homes um a lot of people are having real problems right now with with yeah. trying to slide under the radar. That's one of our bullet points later on. It a, a bullet on your point. list. We have a bullet point. <laughs> we do. We have lots of bullet points today. You know, a lot of people do it because they want to live off the land, uh, and whether they want to raise a crop for cash or they want to um, uh, have cattle, uh, whatever your reason for for using you know for building a tiny house, one of those is probably going to be land use. Um, and you can make money off of your land. Uh, you can have uh, uh, permaculture, you can do uh, fishing, you can do hydroponics, or you know, if you want to use your land, what do, you, what do you want to do on it? Let us know what you'd like to do. This is the first time I've ever said this. I sound like somebody on YouTube. Let us know in the comments what you want to do with your land. Send us a note at radiotinyhouse uh, at gmail.com and um, we'll air some of your uh, reasons to, you know, what you want to do on your own land. Well, and the other thing, fun thing is that I'm working on a workshop that talks about how you can make money from your tiny house. A lead-in. I know, I just grabbed it. <laughs> so, if you have done, I've, I've got a list right now of like 40 or 45 things you can do to work from your tiny house. Um, like, you know, some of them are about land, right? right? Um, but if somebody has done something I haven't thought of, I'd love to know. Yeah. So cool. Cool. Totally cool. I've always wanted cows, so that's what I would do on, on my land if I had enough land. Cool. Oh, and horses. Well, we don't. No, Hallelujah. we don't. No, we, we have don't. enough yeah. troubles with goats and no, Beth, chicken. Beth, whenever I say anything about that much land, she's like, oh, I'm thankful we don't have that much yeah. land. We have enough to take care of. So anyway, um, Beth did her first workshop. Yep. It was, it was good. And your next one is going to be? Sometime in February. I haven't, uh, don't have the list, the date yet, but um, it was about, uh, you know, going tiny. Um, I think I called, yes, I called it Get Her Done in 2021. And I'll probably offer that workshop a few times in the year. But what I have discovered is many of the people that listen to us and follow us in our Facebook group are interested in DIY stuff. Right. Um, you can Google all day long and get all kinds of information, um, but sometimes it's inaccurate. Um, and I, we're doing a really, working really hard to make sure that we give you the accurate, safe information so you can do, be on this journey in the appropriate way. We kind of lean toward legal, not illegal. <laughs> Yes. Right. Sometimes there's some rule bending, I suppose, but um, we think that you should. There's often building codes and things like that for a reason. So we think that that's the best way to go. And we decided to permit our shed. Um, and uh, I'm trying to help other people because it's so much easier to get insurance and all kinds of other things. Right. So um, I'm trying to help people figure out. Can how to you get, from get insurance if you don't have a 
permit or if you don't have a certificate of occupancy? Well, here's the question. I don't, uh, for us, we had to have a certificate of, of occupancy right. to get our insurance. But in counties that don't require permitting, I don't know the answer to that question. And I want to chase that down. So I don't know how you do that. Because of our experience, we built two houses. We've lived, we, our podcast is in a drag, what I call a drag and drop shed. We've lived in a camper while we were building. So we've got all those kind of tiny house experiences. And some of those are good and some of those are bad. So, yeah. Anyway, yep. enough about that. <laughs> Onward. So this, feed, this cannot be an hour long because I can't feed, get it to upload on YouTube. Feedback was good. Feedback was good. Okay. Yeah, I, I had really good feedback from my uh, web my workshop attendees. Excellent. And we'll do it again. Uh, last week, we had our first guest. And it, she was great, I she thought. She was uh, from Texas who built... Uh, a tough shed TR1600, uh, two story just like the one we have, but they we went with a little bit more of a farmhouse, cottage, cottage call us car, colonial car, kind of look, salt boxy kind salt of looking box. thing. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all don't have the porches. <laughs> and Delin did not. They built uh, a rustic looking cabin uh -huh. with, uh, with double, double porches. porches. God, I'm never going to hear the end of this. <laughs> True, you aren't. <laughs> Till I get them. <laughs> I just wanted a simple, like a wraparound porch that we could have rocking chairs on, and Beth wants a double porch. Yeah, so we're at the porch impasse, but that's okay. So here's the thing about that episode. I worked on it, um, and uh, I wanted to show pictures of Delenn's house. Right. Because, you know, having an episode where you're talking about somebody's house, and then you can't see it, that's not a lot of fun. Right. But... Uh, it also got a little long because we had a lot to talk about, and I cannot get the stupid thing to upload on YouTube. Well, Delenn and I are both talkers, cut from the same cloth. We've never never met a stranger, right? So yeah, we had a, a nice conversation, right? So I finally have decided today that I'm uploading it on YouTube in part A and B. So if you want to go watch Delenn's uh, episode where she talk, where she shows us her house. You're going to have to watch it in two parts because that's the only way I can get it up there. Right, and you can find it on YouTube at Radio Tiny House. It's on our Radio Tiny House YouTube channel. So uh, today's topic, yep. the big topic, is uh, we're going to talk about rent to own, mm -hmm. um, which we did with our drag and drop shed, the one we're in right now. Um, we were tying up a lot of money into our, our house. We paid for, for the house cash. We got the drag and drop shed before we actually started construction on the house, uh, and we were living in our camper. Yep. And we were chauffeuring. Yes, because the I was working from home, right? and I couldn't really live and work in a camper. I could have, I suppose, but I didn't want to. Well, we did for a while. We, we had did. we had a house that we hard. were living in. And we had the camper, and that was kind well, of our and office. We, we had a storage unit, and mm -hmm. we knew we didn't because we had you know our life was on hold while we got. Tiny House 1 done, and then Tiny House 2 was in the midst, and we got a storage unit because we had moved away from a rental that we were living in that was near our property. So we ended up getting a storage building to offset that. Right. I mean, if we were to spend the money, we might as well have a building on our property, right? Right. But, now, I want everybody to, to really pay attention. Because I have real bullet points. Beth is getting ready to do math. <laughs> So get out your calculators yeah. <laughs> and, check and just me. double check No, this. I'm going to do general math, but uh, if I can, I think I can, I'm going to put a link to my little math calculator in the bottom of the YouTube. Thing. We can do that, yes. So you can go do your own math. I'm going to talk about general math. Yes, do... Don't count... Don't check do, your math. <laughs> check, check your math. I actually... I'm pretty good at math. Well, I didn't know that I was pretty good at math. When I was a kid, I always thought I was terrible at math. Um, but then I discovered spreadsheets, and I love to speak spreadsheet. Uh, so anyway, let's talk about uh, rent-to-own buildings. Now, whenever you're driving anywhere in rural Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, I don't know. We haven't, I haven't been to Texas driving lately, but they're everywhere. You see these sheds right. on the side of the road everywhere, and some of them are better than others. Um, and, you know, we're going to do some more digging into that, but um, that's what we're talking about. These sheds you see on the side of the road, if you aren't up to speed on that, a lot of people are converting those into houses. And it's tricky because you have to find the right place to do that. Now, one of the things I'm working on is trying to find, create lists uh, of the counties where you can do this. 
Um, I have Tennessee done. That's exciting. Right. I'm working on the states that are around us. So Tennessee, North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, Georgia, South Florida. Carolina Alabama, because we live in Georgia. Florida, mm, I don't know yet uh, where I'm, what I'm going to do with that one. It's a big, obviously, as we talked about last week, tiny homes on wheels are okay. But anyway, so, but these things were built as sheds. They are mostly not built to code, right? So you can't necessarily live in them. And many counties won't allow you to live in them. But let's set all that aside and say, first off, I'm not a consultant on changing a house, a shed. There's a, several things. Fire code. You want to think about fire codes. You want to think about snow loads. And you want to think about wind. Those are the three most important things to well, make yourself safe. And egress. You have to well, have more what, than one point of egress. That's what I mean, kind of like yeah. fire codes. But be able to get out, right? So for this shed... Shoffice, we have a door in the front, and if I was living in this thing, I'd want a door right there to yep. get out. Yeah. But that's another conversation for another day. Anyway, um, so these sheds are often offered as rent to own, and interestingly enough, if I can get there, there's a rent to own place not far from us that is offering them fully finished, inside outside. That's cool. Rent to own, it's like four hundred bucks a month. Do It'd you get to choose? She, yeah. I mean, you can say, hey, I want it this way or that way. It'd be great for a she shed. I mean, lots of different reasons. You don't necessarily have to live in it. But um, here's the thing about rent to own that I want to talk about first. Because it's a drag and drop shed. If you decide you want to finish it out and you can't bank your payments, guess what they can come do? Yep. They can come take it away. Right? So then you are left homeless. Right. Now, you may have already decided to live in a shed to keep you from being homeless. So you want to make sure you make that payment. The other thing that's tricky is some rental companies tell you, like rent to own companies, tell you you cannot do that because they don't want to run into eviction notices and all those things that might be applicable. Right. In and then when, if you've converted your shed... And they come and, and take they it come away. and take it away. Then they've got to sell basically a house that's as done, a repo, and they can't necessarily guarantee your work, and it's right. all very complicated. So make sure you read your fine print of your uh, your rent to own contract. Contract. I read about some guy who had a leak in his roof uh, from a rent to own company, and he got the rental company to come and fix the leak in his roof. They realized his house had been converted from a rent to own into a house and they repossessed it because he was in breach of his contract. So just be really careful about what that language says. Right. <clears throat> now, um, I, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about, but I think those are important pre-things to know right. if you're thinking about going that I way. I agree. Um, what I really wanted to talk about is once you get one of these, oh, there's the, a big debate whether rent to own is a, is a reasonable way to go forward in your housing, right? Or anyway, because it's like renting to own a washer or dryer or renting to own furniture. The cost to do it is significantly higher. Right. It, if you would say predatory lending, right, um, the, the interest rate on a rent to own is, I don't even know, I haven't done the math, but let's just say it's 25%. Right, which is, if you would do it as a loan, it'd be predatory lending. Right. But here's the thing. The person who is offering you the building and a rent to own is taking a big risk on you. They don't do any credit checks. They just show up and drop off a building. Right. Usually, I don't remember, did we do one or two months payment ahead of time? Or just I think one we did month? one month ahead. Right. So they don't really have any deposits or any skin in the game. Right. But their skin in the game is the equity that's in the shed. And right. And they know if they come get it. They can probably turn around and resell it right. uh, for whatever they're missing. But um, so the, the math can be tricky because the interest rate, if you want to call it that, is really high. Right. Right. But let's just do some math now. I know it's scary. I've only had one <laughs> cup of coffee this morning. So. And I put the calculator in the, the YouTube thing. Um, or if you're listening, you can email Barry at Radio just Radio Tiny House and say uh, yeah. spreadsheet. Radio Tiny House at gmail .com. Uh, at gmail .com and say spreadsheet, spreadsheet. and we'll get that to you. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get Barry to send it to you. But here's the thing: 
If you are living in a place, let's just say you're living in a city and you gotta just be paying a thousand bucks a month for your rent, right? And you want to rent to own. Right. All right, that's a easy math because we can do easy math while we're talking. Then you do a rent to own shed, or then you decide you want to have land and you want to move and whatever. So you've got, maybe you've gotten a place to finance your land. Not everybody can do that, but right. let's say you found some land and you're financing it, it's 300 bucks a month. Yeah. Okay. And you've got some cash. So what do you do? How do you build on that site? Right. Do you go and get a, do you go and build from scratch and potentially run out of money? If you want to do it, if you don't know how to build the outside, we didn't want to crawl around roofs. We'd built one house and we were never doing that again. Right. So do you, if you bring a rent to own shed, then you can save your cash for the inside, for the plumbing, the sewer, the well, whatever you have to have, right? The grading, whatever you have to do to make that property vi viable. I do talk about in my workshop some ways that you don't have to do all that stuff. But for this today's conversation, so the math, you've got $300 land payment, let's say. You were living in a place that cost $1,000 a month. You can get into, you've got $10,000, let's just call it, and or $20,000, whatever you, or you can put it on a credit card, whatever you need to do, right? But then you have the bulk of the house, you're on rent to own, and it's very expensive. So my thought, um, my math calculator is, if you can live for anything under $1,000 a month to get yourself out of the rent trap you're in, right? right? then it's worth it. It doesn't matter how much you pay for it because then you, once you get your house done on the inside, you take that same amount of money and you throw it on that rent to own and right. pay the thing off, Yep. right? And Dave Ramsey talks about the snowball stuff, right? Where you go take your largest credit card and start paying everything down. Use the same technique. Don't live in it forever at the rent to own rate. Right. Get out of that rent to own contract as fast as possible. Um, but there, I mean, if you think it through that way, you are, Yes, you're paying a premium for not having a credit check. You're paying a premium for having somebody just bring you a shed or a house to live in. But then you don't have to worry about, um, you know, the financing of that. Then you take your money and build and your build site it out. out. And then you just live that way. And as and as yes, long as you've little... gone with the right company and you've checked the contract and done yeah, all yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and it is easy because we've experienced this. It's easy to start a home building project and then get into it and you're finding out you're just you're just Bleeding handing out money. money well we did that with our house which is why we have crappy floors yeah we got yes yeah. exactly yeah and we, hate them. we paid we paid cash for for everything and when we got to the the end it was time to put floors in and we were like hmm. mm, what's the cheapest thing we get we found some great floors in kentucky yeah uh, hard, hardwoods and then we decided not to make that drive to Kentucky, and we stopped, and we got um, cheap flooring in Dalton, Georgia, and just got this cheap flooring. And we had no idea that, that any time good. one drop of water would go on no, it, the whole horrible. thing would flake it's off. It's awful. It's terrible. Don't so, do that. Don't do it. But it is it. easy to to you keep digging in your wallet. I mean, yeah, it's you're just like, oh my it's god, crazy. I just spent sixty thousand dollars this year. So I mean, if you whatever if it is. you've got the property and you do a rental, rent to own, uh, of a shed building like we, the drag and drop we're in, then you're way ahead of the game in many ways because you've got that shelter already built. Right. You, you don't have to pay for the roof. You don't have to pay for the... You're not you know, crawling you, you're up not, on the roof. Yep. You don't, you're not running out of money because you, you've, you know, uh, or you can't buy more uh, two by fours because you, you've got to wait for your next paycheck or whatever. Uh, that's already done for you. Now you may have to go through and add additional things in order to meet code if you live in an area that's right. Got code. And if you're gonna, if you have one of these drag and drop sheds, there are some things that I would recommend that you ask for them to, to do. Right, and I'm they working. will, they yeah. will in many ways they'll do. I mean, we what you want to have yeah, done. Yep. I'm working on like a shed planner. Like, make sure you ask this question, this question, this question. One thing I would encourage everyone to do is get rid of the two by the 24 inch spacing on these sheds and right. ask for 16 inch on center because it's a whole lot easier to insulate and it's stronger. And that. it may cost you and a little tie bit downs more, so you don't fly away in the wind. Right. You know those kind of things. You can ask for those to be specially added to your you can. build, and the rent to own. It's not going to cost you that much more. What would it cost you? Like ten bucks a month? Yeah, or worth it. or and if you can go to somebody that's already built out the inside, like this 
Yeah, like these guys us. that are here. Now, we, I don't know anything about the level of what they're doing. I think we doing. need to take a road trip. I think we're going to go see them. I saw them on, pop up on Facebook. Anyway, so, um, yes, rent to own is a premium. And there's a premium to doing it. But if that works in your county, if that works in your life, I don't think that it's automatically bad. That's right. where I'm headed with right. this. Uh, when some people get on these Facebook groups, they start screaming at people about how what a terrible decision rent to own is. And I don't think they can speak for everyone. For everybody. I think everybody has to look at their financial situation. And if rent to own is a way to get to where you need to go financially, then do it. Right. Don't worry about the extra premium you're paying. Understand it. Do your math. Use my calculator yep. if you want Use to. Use best calculator. Um, and then understand what those numbers are and make the decision if that's the right answer or right. not. It, so it, and, and again, it that, may not be right for, for no. some people. And uh, it, it would be a great opportunity for, for others. Everyone. That's exactly right. So that's my speech for the day. That's excellent advice. Thank you. Uh, it's like listening to Facebook doctors. <laughs> what is that? Every, everybody has an opinion on Facebook about oh, something. Yeah. Um, and they may be right for them. I mean, that might be their experience, but that doesn't mean that everybody's going to have that same experience. Right. So for us, I would say that the way we did this, in addition to building a house at the same time, uh, was the right thing for us to do. Yeah, and having it. I mean, we just stabilized it enough. Like the ceiling right now is just what I call astrofoil, but it's right. reflexic. You know, it keeps it warm enough. It keeps it stable enough that we can manage it. It's a three-season Thing. Oh, right. we're in the fourth season, and it's a little chilly, but it's okay. I'm going to get a rug buddy, and I'll talk to you about that at some point. And we're going to warm our floors. But, um, you know, and things that we I wish we had done, do something different on the floors in the shed. But, you know, you learn. Yep. So that's why we're doing a podcast, and that's why we do a Facebook group to teach other people from what we did or didn't do. Right. That's exactly right. And that's what, all I'm going to say about Learn that. from our experience. Exactly. Both good and bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Some were good, some Is were bad. Is that it for your shed? Um, I did want to say the couple of, I, I alluded to it, but if you're going to think of the shed to home and you're going to get a shed with lofts or just get a shed, I want to make sure you think about three or four things. I talked about it briefly. You, The biggie problems that I want you to be safe about other than uh, fixing it somehow on a foundation or figuring out how you're going to land the thing, right? Some people don't, but... The big ones are stairs, right? Railings on those stairs, right. so people don't, or, or over in your loft, so people don't fall out of them. Fire. That, that, that's a hazard. Right. Fire. <laughs> that's to get out. Right. If your house catches on fire. You want to be able to get out. Um, there are codes about egress, about windows crawling out of windows, two doors, those kind of things. So even if you live in a place where you don't have permitting. Pay attention to being able to get out of your house right? and that kind of thing. Get decent windows, too, if you can well, upgrade. You, yeah, because you, you don't want to put your family at risk. No. and Right, exactly. And uh, snow, snow loads. If you right. live in a place that's a lot of snow, you want to make sure that your, your roof can hold up to it. And then wind. Right. right? So the snow load is de dealt with by roof pitch and how strong your trusses are and wind, usually the easy answer is you can use mobile home straps and tie downs and keep your shed either, they either run them up and over the roof like through the trusses and back down and right. then they're like metal strips and then you attach them to something on the ground, hooks or concrete, concrete or, something. or something, or they run them across the floor and keep your house down. Now we haven't had any trouble. This one is just dropped. We don't have any of those hurricane ties. We don't have egress. We only use it as for what we use it for. Um, well, but we don't live in it. No, we don't. And if we did, I'd upgrade some of those things. Yep. But we can't in my county anyway. Um, so anyway, that's my speech about be safe. Awesome. So. And then we went through math. It wasn't horrible. It's not being a soothsayer. No. Or prognosticator. Not sure I know what a soothsayer is. Well, somebody that, you know, tells the future. It's another big word it's you're just using common today. common sense. What was the word dad wanted me to use? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't, something, not prognostication. I no, don't remember. I don't remember soothsayer. either. Soothsayer. Soothsayer, yeah. So you're not being a soothsayer. You're just using common sense. Yes. You're not predicting the future or... And I'm not uh, encouraging not you one way or the other. Yeah, no just legal use common issues. sense. Just use common Whatever sense. Whatever you do in life, use common sense. Well, there's a lot of that missing. 
Not from our listeners, I'm sure. No, I'm There's sure not. From other, you know, people on YouTube and, right. and, and that listen to podcasts, but we know not from our listeners. Right. And speaking of, well, are we, do you have anything else you want to I, about? Well, we've got a number of news items. Oh, okay. We need to so hit. Mary's the news guy. So well, what, go do you, for what do you want? Why? What would you? No, no, no. I want to talk about what next week is. But oh, well, we'll yeah. Of course, we've got to do that at the end. Right, I sort That's of alluded. We, I sort of alluded to it. Oh, I was alluded. Say, now you're using that. Speaking yes. of, but oh, we'll wait. So we'll yes, because that's you know the yes but the hook indeed for the next hook year. We'll we got it we got to you know, it's got to be fresh on their mind at the end <laughs> of the show. So we we have some some news. Um, we got to go fast. We're yeah, we've got four long. pieces of news. Atlanta, what's going on in Atlanta? That's good news. Um, tiny houses have been approved within the city limit, especially yeah, particularly accessory dwelling units. Right. And so um, we're seeing them not only in Clarkston, where that tiny home neighborhood is that I'm dying to go to, um, and video. Um, maybe they they're just getting framing done. I wanted to get it a little further along before right. I go video. Anyway, um, so Atlanta, good news. They're starting to let tiny houses come into the city limits. Some of them are already there because they were grandfathered in before right. they started making all these crazy codes. But now they're letting people do it. And I think Atlanta needs it very much. Right. Our, our cost of living has gone up and yada, yada. All right. Uh, headline, Washington State. Not so good news. What's going on there? Okay. So Washington State, they... The crazy thing is in Seattle, if you drive up I-5 into the city, you'll see... Hundreds, I think. I haven't seen oh. it since we've been we've been living there. It's been a long time since we've lived there. But from what I can tell, hundreds of like wooden tents that they're putting in parking lots and here, there, and everywhere that people are living in because Seattle's cost of living is so crazy. And honestly, it rains all the time in Seattle. And oh my God, if I were homeless, I'd get on the I five and start walking south. You bet. I would go to L A. But anyway, um. So, but Washington State. So they're doing that in Seattle, but the reverse of that is they've started requiring, if you live in a tiny home on wheels, they're requiring that to have full inspections. I don't know that that's a bad thing, back to our earlier conversation about people living in things that aren't safe. Right. But it's really causing a lot of consternation in the world of tiny home builders. Consternation? <laughs> there you go. Um, in the world of tiny home builders, and many of them are uh, opting out and just offering shop, uh, shop offices like we have, tiny homes and things like that. So I think the cost of tiny homes in Washington State might start to skyrocket as there's more and more requirements being right. put on them. So it's a real dichotomy. There's another one. It's a real dichotomy that they're making people wooden tents to live in Seattle and then making people who want to live legally not be able to do have it. have to so, jump through all um, kinds of hoops or not hoops. do it at all. Exactly. And, and, of course, my belief is that we could solve our homeless problem in the United States to a large degree. I don't know that we'll ever totally do away with homelessness, but um, we could solve it to a large degree with having trouble getting the straw to your mouth. <laughs> yeah. With tiny houses. Hey, my brand it's some black type. and red to yes. go with our Radio Tiny House logo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, anyway, that's my two cents on that. Um uh, next item is tiny house owners being evicted. There's a great article uh, on uh, Insider. Uh, you can find it at insider.com. name of the article is Tiny House Owners Are Facing Evictions or Living Under the Radar Because Their Homes Are Considered Illegal in Most Parts of the U.S. I think that most parts of the U.S. is incorrect uh, well, because a tiny home in this world is a mobile home. Right, and if right. you're careful about what you do, you can live legally in hundreds of counties throughout the United States. Right now, we can't in our county. You can no. have a double wide but not mobile a home, wide. but not a single wide. But there are counties all around us that you can have a mobile home. But I mean, that is also you know not clickbait, but it's also more you know. It, it's sensationalist. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a, a sensationalistic a head, headline. Headline. But the reality is, the article talks about a young lady who wanted to live in her parents' backyard or right. something, didn't do her homework, she got all settled, and somebody reported her and blah, blah. So Well, it wasn't even a had... report. A neighbor asked somebody at the zoning board about if they were allowing tiny houses. Oh. And the zoning board said no. no. And no, so no. they went out and looked. Long story short, she tried. They told her she was in violation of a, top, a couple of different codes. She tried to um, to do everything that the, you know to come up to code. Right. And the county still said they, no, no. Sorry, you know this is. And, and you know the problem here is uh, 
several fold. One, one, if you don't have permitting, then you become a place where somebody is running their sewer down the outside of your property, right? right? Or the, the edge of your property. If you have, uh, I lived in Okinawa when I was a kid and they had open sewers. You, I promise you, you don't want your next door neighbor doing that. Right. Um, but then mobile home manufacturers, that was a great thing in the 70s. And then they started putting out such cheap junk that people were saying this is running down the, and people were living in ways that this was running down the value of the property nearby. So people said, I don't want to have mobile homes in this area. Let's zone them or permit them, zone them and put them over here. So that's how mobile home parks right. really started. And then now they're like, oh, those are cheap. That's where, you know, all kinds of bad things happen. And so we don't want those anymore. That's what happened in our county, I'm sure, that they right. just didn't want that kind of person living in the county. Right. right? Um, so, you know, we've sort of done it to ourselves, but um, it's all about tax dollars. It's all about who has a voice. But what I think is going to happen over and over again is that people will start fighting to have a certain quality back to the whole Washington thing. Yes, people are worried about the codes, but honestly, I'm not sure that's a bad thing right. to have somebody's tiny house inspected before they live in it. Right. That's exactly back right. Back to the fire, snow, wind, yada, yada. So, um, and you know, if you're an unscrupulous builder, you can take, that's another one. You Man, can take. we are full of big <laughs> words today. We are on fire. <laughs> big word fire. You can take advantage of people who don't know what to ask for, or don't know what you're doing. So building codes are not a bad thing, right. is my point. That's a t-shirt we should have, by the way. Which is? Radio Tiny House, use big words. <laughs> <laughs> or we use we big use words. We use big words. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, but they are being evicted, but you got to do your research. There right. You go. Yeah, you got to do research. There's another part of that is also uh, that same article tells about a town in Texas where they've done a really cool thing, I think. Uh, people were leaving this town. It was a nice little town. Oh, is that Spur? Uh, or, yeah, is that what's yeah. called? Spur? Um, and they were, I think that's it. Think and that's they right. had this great little town and their population slowly started moving to the larger population centers of where you can actually get decent, get decent internet. internet and jobs and all that you kind know, of stuff. Silly things like that. So they dwindle down to about a thousand people in the town, but there's still a hardware store and a grocery store and all everything, restaurants, everything you kind of need to to live. I don't know if there's a Starbucks there. Yeah, that was part of our criteria. Anyway, what they did was they went through. They had a whole bunch of empty lots, and they agreed to approve tiny houses for anybody that would come in and do it, you know, do it right. And so they've got dozens of people that have moved there specifically because of the town is tiny house friendly. If they're smart, people will find a medium between it. Uh, and so we have room rungs on the property ladder that start you, right? If you get to a certain point, you can keep going up. But right. It's, uh, for many people, particularly uh, millennials and younger, it's that first level of the property ladder they can't get on. Right. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they don't make enough money to go out and purchase a new starter home that's 300000 $300, bucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, the final news story for the day, and this is one that kind, no, go ahead. That kind of makes me sad a little bit. Yeah. The uh, Florida Suncoast Tiny Home Festival scheduled for March 21 and 22 of next year, that's 2021, uh, has been canceled. Right. So uh, we were planning on being there and broadcasting and doing some stuff like that from there. Um, but obviously that is now not going to happen. Right. All right. So that's it for today. Our next episode next week. It's called? The fire episode. The fire episode. Now we're not going to talk about houses burning down. No, well, maybe gonna... a little bit. Oh, okay. Not well, burning down. Well, that would be fun. Maybe we can have Fireman Sam on. I don't even know who that is. Oh, some cartoon character. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about fire in lots of ways in your world of tiny living. Okay. Awesome. I, I know what one of them is, and it'll it'll be well, fun, actually. The sneak peek is I'm making a fire video for you. If any of you want to have a tiny home fire video for your Christmas, it's going to look a little different than the little magical fireplace that you put on your TV with kittens playing. <laughs> it's going to be more our style. Okay, cool. I like that already. I, I hope it won't have to be part A and B. I don't, oh my gosh. <laughs> I just thought about uploading the thing. But oh, anyway, yeah. we'll get oh, there. Well, I'll go to Panera. <laughs> That'll be a good excuse to go to Panera. We, we may have to go to like some AT&T Worldwide Maybe. Fiber Optics headquarters. Maybe. 
if I'm going to put a long three hour video up on YouTube. But anyway, yeah, so, so I'm working on that. If, if you like what we're, what we're doing, subscribe to our channel, Radio Tiny House on uh, YouTube. Uh, hit the bell, like us. Um, Follow us. You can follow us on uh, RadioTinyHouse.com. You can follow our podcast on uh, Anchor and Apple and uh, Google you and wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, you we can, do have a Facebook group, but, we, but if you, it's maybe too complicated. Let's just stick to Radio Tiny House. Yeah. You'll find us. Yeah, you'll find us eventually. And um, uh, is that all the plugs we can do? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> the, oh, um, RhapsodyandBlooms.com. Oh yeah, yeah. We call our it's our daughter's uh, wedding florist business, and we uh, make her sponsor us. Uh, we laugh about that, but um, we're gonna actually have her on the show in January because she's one of our money making. Um, right. We're gonna start featuring people who are making money from their tiny home, and we are going to help you figure out how to do something like she does in your tiny home and Perfect. your acreage. So I'm excited about doing that. Uh, I've got her working on some uh, phases. Right. Cool. Cool. I like that. So contact us or if you want if more information about what we do or if you've got questions about uh, something that we've said or an article that we've talked or about. You or you know if you somebody just need... that we, sh we should interview. Yeah, if you know somebody we should interview, uh, reach out to us at radiotinyhouse at gmail.com. Got it. And I think that's it for yeah. today. All right, have a great week, and uh, we will see you next week for the fire episode. Fire episode. Have a great one.